Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. And today we're actually kind of continuing our gimbal talk. Last week we compared the DJI Ronin RSC2 compared to the Zion Weevil 2. And at the end of that video, I explained why I would prefer the Ronin over the Weevil 2. So if you haven't already checked that out, I'll leave the video linked above. I wanted to show you how I would rig this up um, if this were my camera setup that I was using for professional shoot to make it as efficient and kind of give me all the features that I need. So of course, we're starting with the gimbal itself and I already have the uh, follow focus set up. And then again, we're using my same pocket 4K with the Canon 18 to 135 lens on it. And so far that's pretty much it, pretty light rig. Let's add just a couple accessories to make this a little bit more fitting for my style of shooting. My biggest concern with this setup is battery life, not for the gimbal, but for the camera. Everyone who owns a Blackmagic Pocket camera knows that you roughly get like 40 minutes to at best about an hour on the 6K Pro, but definitely around like 40, 45 minutes with the Pocket 4K. And even if you have a bunch of batteries on set, it is always annoying with gimbals because then usually don't have easy access to the compartment door. This one actually, this one you do. That is kind of nice. At least balance with this lens, it's far back enough to where I can fully open the battery door and pop the battery out. But still, I personally am the shooting style where I just like to hook up one battery and then be able to shoot for at least like three or four hours without having to even think about a battery swap. So let's add a couple accessories. And in the last video, I talked about how you have two NATO rails on the sides, but I don't really have any accessories for that. And so what I wanna do is connect this uh, Zion like battery plus pack that's for my Crane 3 Pro. And it connects via this little mini V mount adapter here and this just uses a Ari rosette, but then a quarter 20, and obviously there's nowhere to connect it, or so I thought. So if we open up the included uh, DJI Pro bag here, and again, I have the Pro kit, and so what that comes with is this guy right here, which is technically a phone holder that you can connect to the side and connect to uh, put your phone to use as a monitor, which we'll test on in a few minutes, but I actually am just going to use a little piece of this. So I'm actually going to take off the phone holder side, and then this last little like hot shoe adapter also just twists off. And what we are left with is a little NATO rail to quarter 20 right there. It's not an Ari Rosette, um, so, we still could have some issues with it sliding around, but for all intents and purposes, it kinda is a near perfect uh, fit. Definitely works. If I just attach this to one of the NATO rails on the left or the right side, doesn't really matter. My hand does fit perfectly uh, back there, so that's not an issue, even if I attach the battery there. Definitely obviously adds some weight to it, but for me, it's worth it um, because now I can just connect that and now I have long-term battery. And then the second thing I want to add and kind of test out is the RavenEye um, system here. So this is just a nice little wireless transmitter. I'm gonna pop to the bottom side of the case, which is where all of the crazy uh, cables are at. So it's really nice that it comes with all of the various cables that you could possibly need. And since the Pocket 4K uses full-size HDMI, I'm going to grab that. And first we're going to attach this guy on the bottom. It looks square, so it looks like it can go either way, but I believe it's gonna be one of these. And just kinda sits in there. And now we just need to connect a couple cables to complete the setup. So first one here is going to be mini HDMI to the transmitter, HDMI to the camera. And man, that seems like the perfect length. It's not too much cord and not too short of cord. That's like literally like perfection. <laughs> and then there's two USB type C's. Looks like this is the power side. And the other bundle of cables that it comes with is a 
bunch of different power cables. And so this one actually is a nice right angle. Definitely starting to look a little bit more messy with our cables, but it works. All right, so now let's power on the gimbal itself. I'm gonna unlock all the motors and let's see if we can get, uh, you know, if the gimbal's still good as well as the transmitter going. And we'll open up the DJI Ronin app. All right, now I'm gonna say connect to Raveneye. Oh, I have to power it off. There we go. So now I can actually see what the camera is seeing. And so this is where I can get different follow modes. And so now you can see the gimbal is following the gyroscope of this. All right, and so now I'm gonna test out the active track feature where apparently if I just draw a box around me, it will follow me. That is crazy. So if you don't have a second camera person and you need to film yourself, that uh, active track is super cool. Recenter, you also have some nice uh, monitor controls in here. So you have false color, zebras, focus peaking. You can apply different LUTs, that's cool. And of course, even if you don't wanna mess with any of the controls here, um, you can just hand this off to somebody or download the app and put it on an iPad. And now you have a nice director's viewfinder, which definitely is handy. So that way me as the operator of the gimbal, I can look on the back of the camera and kind of make sure I'm getting everything right uh, and getting the shot that I want. And then the director or client or whoever can look at the phone screen and um, also make sure that you're getting the right shot and everything. So after using this gimbal for a bit now and kind of fully rigged up with the Raven Eye system, with the extra battery pack, with the follow focus, this is a very, I think, well-priced, well-budgeted and overall pretty light system, even fully rigged up. I would say this is comfortable to use with one hand. Obviously for long use, you're gonna need that second hand in there, but it's, incredibly versatile um, and it's going to be able to do all the cool gimbal moves that you'd want. No, you're probably not going to hook this upside down up to a whole like car regging system or more complex stuff that it would do with finger gimbals. But considering that this entire setup can be broken down in the matter of minutes to be just put in this tiny little case, that's awesome. I'm used to huge Pelican cases that require, you know, an extra case for the camera, extra case for this. And here you can just hold your small mirrorless camera, maybe put on a strap around you, and then hold all of your accessories and entire setup in here. And with this whole setup, I could literally run for probably four or five hours before needing to replace any sort of battery or charge anything. So what do you guys think of the DJI Ronin RSC2? Honestly, I'm so impressed with this. I can only imagine how good the RS2 is for bigger cameras like the Pox 6K Pro. So let me know down in the comments if I should maybe try and pick one of those up to do a review on that and see how much better it is because I'm impressed between active track, between the great ergonomics of the follow focus the Raven Eye system, and of course the ability to change the hinge and get a whole bunch of different follow modes. Good job, DJI. Thanks so much for watching everybody. I'll see you in the next video.